Scott Erickson, Technical Marketing for Pulse Secure. In our last video, we looked in depth at the SSO and email discovery options for device provisioning on PWS. Today, we will explore the other options for end user provisioning. While SSO and email discovery is preferred by some, there are reasons for the other types of end user provisioning methods. First, let's define each method. SSO provisioning. This method links a PWS domain to a PCS gateway. This enables end users to use their enterprise credentials to authenticate before being permitted to onboard their device. It leverages a currently deployed PCS gateway with integration into the enterprise directory, typically Active Directory or LDAP. From the end user's, end user's perspective, there are two different ways to trigger the SSO provisioning process. When the end user opens the Pulse VPN client, they can either input their email address, referred to as email discovery, or their PWS domain, the FQDN. Email discovery requires the admin first contact support in order to link their specific company email domain to the specific PWS domain. While the other method, the FQDN method, does not require any settings changes, it will always be an active option for end users. Next, we have what I would call manual registration processes ones that require some form of user interaction uh, or admin interaction prior to provisioning a device. The obvious question is why would you want to ask users or administrators to take extra steps before registering a device? Licensing. Some customers may only want to allow a small subset of their workers to use this service. So manual registration gives them more control over this process. In this manual process, the admin creates an end user's account. As you can see here, they define the email address and username. Note the difference between workspace and provisioning email. The workspace email is the account used in the email application inside the workspace once provisioned, the corporate email address. The provisioning email is an address where a device registration email is sent. This is in the case where a mobile device is a personally owned device without corporate email on it to start with, a basic BYOD use case. The admin could send the registration email, which includes directions, a pin code, and links to kick off the process to a personal email address instead. Here we see they match, um, and so the registration email will go to the same email account as the workspace email. The last option is for the end user to use a self-provisioning portal. In this case, the admin doesn't need to set up each user's account. The users can go to the PWS domain, input the corporate email address, and the registration email, including directions and PIN code, are delivered to the email address defined. In this case, the email address used must match the email domain defined by the admin. Like email discovery, this can only be set up by contacting support. This ensures that only a qualified corporate email address for the specific PWS domain will be allowed. While this does not force any form of actual user pass authentication by the end user against a corporate directory, it does require a, email, a valid email address presumably owned by the end user who is requesting. If they input an email address and they receive the registration email in their account, it's safe to presume that email address used is real and the user rightly has access to the account. Once the user receives the email, they can then use the PIN code to start the registration process. So now we will walk through the provisioning process on an Android device. Now we have successfully registered the device. If you have any further questions, please visit pulsesecure.net. Thank you.